artifacts. It's a huge decision which ones you choose, the order you build them, and when you should invest in them is a critical part of the game. Hey guys, this is Heretic, and now that I've had some more time to reflect on what's important to me in the game for the long run, and after these new crown artifacts have come out, I thought I'd take some time and go over the artifacts that I have, artifacts that I specifically didn't choose, and why I didn't choose them, and what I plan to do going forward. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so to me, the most important part of the game is the realm versus realm. So it is the fortress wars, it's the elite wars, it's the void and the frenzy, those types of events, brave valley, etc. things where you're competing against other realms. The internal conflicts that you have in your realm, it kind of, for the most part goes away after a few months it's not going to go on too terribly long if it does it's going to prevent your realm from from growing overall and and i mean this even in your top end players there is an argument that it will you know the competition will push people to spend more and to get stronger uh, that works for only so much. Once you start getting to the realm versus realm events, at that point, if you don't feel the competitive need to improve, then more than likely you're gonna quit, right? Uh, if if your only internal ambition, you know, your only ambition is to beat someone else within your realm, then how long is that drive gonna be with you? So. For me, again, it's the realm versus realm that's important. That's I get the most amount of joy from, most amount. It's more fun for me. So I'm going to pick uh, my artifacts that help me there. So I'm going to choose the Leviathan. Um, the reason is, for, there's a few, it, it's one of the best uh, overall artifacts that you can get. And we can look here through it. You start um, with your army size limit. So having a huge amount of troops that you can send out in your battles is super important. Then uh, at two star, you have an attack boost. At three, you re reduce the damage that you take from mages, which is great. At four, you reduce it from archers. Then you have troops damage. So that's all your troops, the damage that they have. And then you have HP boost, which increases the hit points for all of your troops as well. It's one of the best. On top of that, it has a great skill that whenever you're attacking, it raises the attack of all your troops that are in the battle. So everyone's troops by 3% and it can be stacked up to four times. So up to 12% increase on attack. Pretty darn good, especially early in the game. 12% attack in the grand scheme of things when people have 400% um, attack isn't huge, um, but it is pretty good, it's, again, especially earlier in the game, and, it, and it's a team skill. Second, I would say the second most important, if not the most important, is the Athena's Aegis. So this one adds a shield. So again, let's, let's go from the beginning. It, the base stat is it reduces damage taken from archers, and then you have infantry defense, infantry HP, and then at the four star, it's your HP boost for all your troops. And then the fifth star is amazing. It's, it's a damage taken reduction by 8.5% for all of your troops. All right, so let's move on. Heavenly Spear is amazing. Its base stat is damage against Cav, which is meh, it's okay. But for archers, it has a great attack boost for everybody. And then uh, archer attack, troops damage, amazing. Archer damage, of course, super important. Uh, it, it was the first artifact that I actually pushed to red. Even though it's, for me, um, at three stars, it's more of just an early early realm uh, fighting type of, of artifact. Again, I am Cav 
Archer. So this is the first time, for example, I've done Athena's Aegis, even though most of this stuff is geared towards infantry in the beginning. I'm gonna lose some stats. But I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you why in just a minute. I'm gonna go over the ones I've chosen. The the next is the golden armor. Obviously, it's amazing for your cav. Uh, it reduces damage taken from mages as your base stat. And then you have cab defense, HP, overall HP boost, damage taken reduction again is amazing. And you have it two times, one for just cab and one for all your troops. So it ends up being, you know, 22.5% damage taken reduction for my cab, which is amazing. Uh, Apollo's bow is also a very, very important one, especially for your archers. Uh, the skill that it has is also really, really good. So let's take a look. So the base is damage against Cav. There's a lot of things here that are against Cav, which is kind of funny in the beginning of the game. Most people are seem to be mage-focused uh, because overall the Cav archer setup is going to be more expensive because of the both the artifacts that you need and because you're going to need to get your your dodge from the mystic college and you're going to need to get that you know in the early 30s to to do the switch to calf so this one comes with archer attack uh, at your two star damage against angels which later on is, is pretty important infantry attack which is wasted for me then calf hp and troops damage which are great of course the skill that you get here is you have a 7% chance of a power strike, which gives you 1.5 times the damage that you do, which is really good, and it, it seems to proc quite often in a battle. It's good. The next one that I have right now is Excalibur. I will eventually take this all the way to 6 star. I'm using the Monster Swarm right now uh, to kind of push it up. I'm, I'm not spending on it. It does have the base stat. It's great for everybody with the attack boost. And then you have your cav attack, army size limit, and then infantry attack, march speed, and then finally troops damage at the six star. The fifth star and the six star are actually pretty important later on, especially in elite wars and fortress wars to speed up your attack so that you can get back uh, to defend, to attack, to block in those events. And now um, let's talk about what I didn't choose. So the other few times that I've, I've run through as Cav Archer, I've always picked uh, Klufich, <laughs> however you say it. But after seeing um, some of the testing that's been done on the skill, here. So what happens here with this skill is it damages the the enemy, which is great. These balls go out and they damage the enemy, and that's amazing. And then it has a 20% chance of making the target's attack stop for two seconds. So it freezes them for two seconds. The problem is after those two seconds, they start attacking your back line. So think about that for a minute. Your front line is there to protect your back line, but if the enemy just completely bypasses your front line and the damage they're, that they're doing is against your back line, it's killing your archers and mages, that's a bad thing. You could actually lose battles because of this. I, uh, you know, in the testing that I've seen here, it is, it can be really bad. It can put you into a tough spot. So I've, I've elected to skip this artifact completely this time. So normally I would have taken those. And you know, I did uh, raise up like the Jang Jang Moi um, was, was, is pretty good too in the beginning of the game. I did use it, but once I was able to kind of switch over to my uh, gold or orange artifacts I've done that so the new artifacts here that are important are these crown artifacts and so they're both really really good the the base for the fire demons crown is damage against both infantry and cap that is beautiful it's amazing 7.5% is what I have it at right now at level 20 
it's great. It, it's it's the best base uh, that you have um, in the game for artifacts. Then you have uh, an infantry and cav HP boost at the two star. At the three star, you have an attack boost. All troops. I mean, these are great, amazing stats here. At your fourth, you have damage against angels, pretty good. And fifth, you have infantry and cav attack boost, not that great, to be honest. Um, maybe later on when you're running like cav and angels without any true backline. And then on your six star, you have uh, troops damage, which is amazing. The skills are also really, really, really good. So it increases your attack by 6% for all of your troops and increases the damage by 4.8% against the, uh, for all your troops against the infantry and cav. So you just have it, it runs all the time. It's not something that like the, the shield where it's only good for you know a certain amount of time every 24 hours. No, once you have this skill unlocked, it applies to every single battle you have both on attack and on defense really it's a really good skill uh, definitely get it if you can the problem that i have here is it costs quite a bit of of dust here to evolve it so the other one the newest one is the thunderbolt crown it is uh, increases the attack of archers and mages again an excellent base um, I'm here at level 19 and it's already 11.4% added to attack for both my archers and mages. Uh, the second level is a second star is enemy troops HP reduction. So anybody I'm fighting, let's say if they have, uh, their infantry has 100 HP, when this battle begins, it effectively lowers it down to 94.2% instead of 100. It's, again, the first time I've actually seen that in a skill, it's really, really nice. The third star is an angel attack. Again, amazing. It's really good to, to get that because there's not a ton of places to get angel attack. Four star, enemy troops attack reduction. So an overall attack reduction once the battle begins of your enemy so again if they had a hundred archer uh, attack uh, it would lower down to 91.5 at the fifth star you get archers and mage hp boost not good <laughs> at your sixth star you get troops damage taken reduction again one of the very best stats that you can have in the game that means whatever your front line is, whatever your angels, all of the damage that they take will be reduced by 11%. Amazing. And the, the actual skill here that you can unlock is almost the same as the Fire Crown, which is when the battle begins, your archers and mages will increase their, their attack will be increased by 6% and it will increase the damage that they do by 4.8 percent so compare it here so this one increases all of your troops attack by six percent and the damage that they do against cat infantry and cav by 4.8 percent this one's a little bit better than the thunderbolt skill but they're both if you especially if you could have both of them which isn't terribly hard to do especially when they first come out i know it's a little little late now here for these but uh, in a new realm uh, when these are first offered to you um, in packs, the price will be really low. So it's it's worth getting it then. It's a one-time buy type thing. Once that goes away, the price increases significantly and it's a little bit more difficult to get these. So uh, just real quick, when, when you're buying artifacts, you have these limited sales, um, which are probably the best way to get them. The, the first three packs, I think it's a $3.99, $6.99. No, no, it's a $1.99, $3.99, and $6.99 are the best ones. They give you the, the, the best uh, amount of fragments per dollar spend. In general, for the non-crown and the non-Leviathan Poseidon, 
which I didn't talk about Poseidon, but the, you should target less than $2 per fragment. That's general. Anything less than $2 per fragment is pretty good. Even here, so the $2 per fragment would be at $12. So this is actually a pretty good deal. Sometimes on the daily specials, you get them as well, and it kind of helps you build through. I think we have one now. Eh, maybe not. But when you have those, they're, they're really good and they'll help you kind of build up. So that's where I am on artifacts. I hope this helps. Uh, let me know in, in the comments how you go about it, how you think about it. You know, one thing I didn't mention, and I'll, I'll go to real quick, is Poseidon. Poseidon's amazing, and I will definitely push this later on. I know uh, towards in-game, so top alliances, you usually have a few people at least that have maxed out this Poseidon. It's pretty expensive overall. There are, there are daily deals that, that have Poseidon. That's the way to go uh, to raise it. And again, you want to keep it less than $5 less than five dollars for leviathan and poseidon artifacts is is what you should be looking for all right again take care I go forever, go for eons. Friend like you on, you don't be on. Pull up in the Tesla, like Elon. When I was a kid, I was a phenom. When I was a kid, I was a beast. I pull up, then I be gone.